Hello, this is James with Lot Hill. I'm going to show you how to use the departments within Time Drop to either specify or group employees by department. You can group them by class, job code, whatever your particular need is. So first, go ahead and open up the Time Drop Manager and sign in. The default username is Manager, and the password is Password. This is the main Time Drop Manager screen. Click on Manage System Options. And you may see just on the business tab, probably down in this area, um, this is the newest version 3.4. In 3.3 or 3.33 or earlier, it, this screen is gonna be rather cluttered and down towards the middle to bottom, you're gonna see group name. And by default, it's department. So you can group employees by department. Uh, if you wanna do job codes, just change that to job codes and then click save. What that will do is that will change under the manage employees area you're gonna see a tab for job codes. And I believe there's also a column in the grid here for job codes as well. Let's see. Okay, it looks like it's just on the, the tab here. So you can see what job codes a particular employee is assigned to. So if you wanna add different codes for um, your business, you can do that. You can do the same thing with department. It's just a, a naming convention. Uh, for this. So if it's still said departments, this tab is going to be called departments, it's going to say departments, uh, department assignments and pay rates, overrides, everything else would be associated that way as well. So since we changed to job codes, that's what it's going to refer to throughout the application. So uh, if you want to manage job codes, click on the purple button here. You can add different codes. So if I, I have a code for, um, I don't know, some sort of, you could do it for like law, you could do different matters, that type of thing. If you just have codes, put in your code, hit okay, it'll add the code. And then when you close this screen, it's gonna add it into the list. So you can go through each employee and check is member. You would either click edit for the highlighted person or double click to go into edit mode, then check they're a member of that. If you wanna allow them to view reports for this, department or job code, then you can check the is owner column. If you don't want them to see reports and who's clocked in or who's using that job code, you would uncheck that. So the is owner column is used for folks that need to see reports or see who's clocked in for that, that particular code or department. Click save. And then I'm going to do mine here. I'm just going to find James. Here I am. And I'm going to check that I'm a member of that one. So if you're checked on more than one department or job code or group, then you're going to be prompted, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll be prompted to select from an option when you clock in or clock, or, yeah, when you clock in. So I'm going to go ahead and check all of these so you'll see what I'm talking about here. Click save, and I'm actually going to change my username so it's easier for me. And password. Save, close, and then at the clock in out screen, um, looks like I'm set up for badge only. So let me go back. You can require that the employees are required to clock in or clock out with a, a badge. Um, you can use the badge, you can use a fingerprint scanner or a, a serial device if you have one, um, and then save, or you can do no device if you don't want to do that at all. Uh, all right, clock in out. So now I can either do the, the RFID badge or I can do username and password. So I'm going to do username and password so I don't have a scanner attached. And here you'll see that now I'm getting ready to clock in. It's saying, where do you want to clock into? By default, it's using my default, um, or I must not have a default set up. So it just automatically clocked me into that particular code. If you want to have a default job code, just like random general work or something like that, or department, you can do that. Under the manage employees area, on the business tab, there's an option for default department. Um, so I'll find myself here, James, and it's not set for me. So I'm gonna say I'm a developer. So we'll just save for that. So now when I go to clock out, it's gonna clock me out. And if I go to clock back in, Type the right password. By default, it's going to do default department, and then it's going to just automatically do it within the preset time that I have. And you can set a predetermined time for that, or you can have it not do 
an automatic selection. So let's go to manager, password, under security, or on the business tab, I think it is still um, in the older version, but on the security tab, you'll see allow clock in out without a password. So if you don't want to require a password, just username, like a badge ID or just a, a, a number, you can do that. Um, and then there is the timeouts that's on the time tab. I think they might still be on the business tab for the older versions. Um, and then there's a confirmation message for clocking in, clocking out. You can set all of these. So um, here's the time assignment form. So that's the one that's asking me which department or job code I want to use. I can change that to never as well. So it won't automatically assume that I'm using a, a, spark, a specific job code or department. Um, and then the clock in out screen, the message that comes up and says, you're not clocked in or you're not clocked out. By default, I think that's set to 10 seconds. Um, you can have that just stay up all the time too, or you can change it to one or three or whatever, um, just to make it go away faster. So those are the different settings for um, just using a job code or a department. And then under manage time entries, when you select a, an employee, let me go to James here, you can see all the different times I've had, what job codes I used for those. Um, and then if you wanted to add one, you just choose the employee first, click add, and you can select a specific department as well. Um, looks like it used my, my default. So when I click add to do a new one, it uses my default in there. Uh, if I click edit, it's going to have just a general in there because that's what I had selected before. So I would be changing an existing job code or department. Then under the reports, there's the who's here monitor. This shows who's clocked in and what job code they're using. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'm clocked in. Let's see, James, James, James. No, I'm not clocked in right now. So if I go ahead and clock in, and we'll do it under this guy, clocked in, and we'll go back to the manager. And now let's refresh. Where'd we, where'd we go? Oh, well, I'm not, I don't have access to that particular department. So let me go back under manager. So I wanna make sure that I am an owner of that so I can see who's clocked in or clocked out underneath that particular code. And we'll go back to who's here. There it is. And now you can see that I'm green and I can select that job code too to see who's using it or who's clocked in under that specific code um, or group. I suppose group is the correct moniker I should be using here. So, um, and then reports, you wanna generate a timesheet report. You can do that. Let's just do year to date and be everything for me. And it's gonna show specific codes. It'll break it down by code, who used it, what time, their total for that code. So you can do job costing. If you're using like a job code sort of naming convention for your groups, then you can see, okay, this job code cost me 12, you know, a penny and a quarter, basically. And you can have the rounding set up to however you want. If you want it to round to a, a quarter, if you want to go to an eighth, you can do that, or, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands, whatever you want to do. Um, and then it just breaks it down by different codes or different departments or groups. So that's it for using and how the departments and, and job codes and grouping all works. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to 855 Lot Hill or uh, shoot us an email at product.support at lothill.com.